right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. And guys, let me tell you, this is definitely going to be the email, uh, uh, the story of the month. That's my prediction, because this is this good. And even though this story is long, it is worth every minute. So by all means, stick around to hear this guy's story. This is about a guy. He is presently 37 years old. And he shares his story about events that happened two years ago when he was 35 and been married for three years. Just like so many guys before him, he thought he really was in a great marriage. He found himself a unicorn, as they are called. Unfortunately, he learned the hard way, even though he didn't see any red flags before, that wasn't the case. She wasn't a unicorn, she was a fucking demon. And how this guy found out about this, her cheating and all that is definitely, truly a bizarre, unique thing that you guys will definitely find entertaining, which you'll see. I won't reveal now, but you'll see as the story goes on. And how he goes about to catch her in the act, her reaction, the divorce, everything is quite entertaining. Now, the guy obviously has been moved, has moved on and sounds like he's doing a hell of a lot better. But as a perfect example, guys, to show you that you, even if you are aware of all the things I talk about and you know to look for red flags and you check the girl all that, still... Some can be that freaking sly, that slick to hide their activities. That's code. And you don't even realize it. <clears throat> so there are no unicorns. You got to be careful. That bullshit can happen. All that. So it's a long story. So I'm going to minimize the commentary going forward unless it's absolutely necessary, even though I probably can't help myself. Starts off, he says, uh, Hi, SSM. I spent the last nine months watching your channel, and it's been an eye opening experience. I wouldn't consider myself a nice guy, but I am a decent man. <clears throat> At least that's what my friends and family tell me. I'm not a pushover, and I have standards that I'm not shy about sharing. Mostly, it's because of my history in relationships. Like most people, I had some good and not so good relationships, but none of them ended in extremes. My story happened when I was 35 years old, and that was two years ago. I had a great career in marketing with a good company and a loving wife of three years that was everything I ever wanted out of a partner. For the story, we will call her Sandy. We met when I was 28 years old and she was 27 at a local book reading group at the library. I've been going to the club for about two months before we spoke for the first time. I didn't know they still had those nowadays. She was really reserved in her manners and dress. She seemed like a nice lady, and she was really fun to talk to. She always came to the library with her best friend that we can call Christy. She was also very reserved and seemed like a nice lady. At the time, she was in a relationship with a guy she met in college, and they seemed to get along really well. Her boyfriend, Steve, was a nice guy, if not a bit quiet, and he worked as a manager for a popular chain of box stores that ends in Mart. Gee, I wonder which one that is. He says, not sure what the rules are for naming companies. Yeah, I'd leave them out. But I think we can all guess which place that is. Over the following year, we had gone on a bunch of dates, and Sandy gave off the girl-next-door vibe. Her family was fairly conservative and seemed like nice people. They always treat me well and respect. They always treat me well and respectful. It was after we dated for almost a year when Sandy brought up the idea of dating monogamously, and I really liked her, so that's what we did. So good. This guy took a year before he actually... He didn't bring up the exclusive relationship. She did. That's good. And he took a year to get to know her before he got into a serious relationship. Good. That's what you do. Make them chase you. Don't rush into things. Unfortunately, even though he took a year, you're going to see eventually... Well, you'll see what you see. She never demonstrated any red flags. Let's remember this, guys. None. Never had any desire to go to clubs, and her version of Girls' Nights Out was inviting Christy over to her house to watch some cheesy romance novels. Or romance movies. I was starting to think I might have found a unicorn. She always made me feel like the most important person in the world. It was never lacking in showing me attention and appreciation, and our hobbies and interests were closely in line with each other. Wow. You can see how this guy thought he found a unicorn. But I want to point out one little detail. How old is Christy? 27. What happens when they get to their late 20s? They know 30s coming around the corner, right? We all know this. And what number scares the bejesus out of most women? 30. Why? Because they know that's when society and men know that their prime has ended. And that's when they got to find themselves a man. 
So in the late 20s, they got to shed their old ways or, 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 or put their old ways in the closet, if you will, for a while and put on the uh, front of a certain way to attract a guy. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Got to be careful. We had been dating for about a year and a half when Steve and Christy got married and we all became good friends. It was three months later when Christy found out that she was pregnant with her first child and I was very happy for them. I was 32 when Sandy brought up the idea of marriage. She had been the model girlfriend who had been living together at my house for a little more than six months and it was great. She went out of her way to make sure that I felt loved and cared for. We shared the household chores and even though she worked a full-time job, she always made a point of packing my lunch often leaving little love notes for me to find. We've been together for four years at that point, and she left no room for me to doubt how much she loved and appreciated me. Again, this looks great, right guys? My parents and my sister loved her and, they, and, and the way she treated and fawned over me. Honestly, she was the first person I had ever met that would ever let me consider the idea of marriage. There was no doubt in my mind that I was completely in love with her. The thing that, that pushed me over the edge to consider marriage was when Sandy, without my promoting, offered to sign a prenup, prenup, prenuptial agreement. The stars are aligned for this guy like, shit, she's offering to do a prenup. Great. She told me that she was in love with me and there was no doubt that I was the man she wanted to spend her life with. I never thought a relationship like this was even possible, let alone something I would find. In four years together... Sandy had never demonstrated a single red flag, and her best friend was as conservative as she was. It was obvious to me at the time that her parents raised her well. Long story short, I proposed to her, and we were married about four months later. I was so deliriously happy that it was hard to believe that my life was real. And I wish it stayed that way, bro. I really, I really do. Over the next three years, our marriage was great. I was doing really well at my job, and in between my income and Sandy's, we had all the things that made us happy. We went on trips a few times a year and spent a lot of time with Steve, Christy, and their son that called me uncle. I know that marriages usually start, off, start to cool off after some time, but after nearly seven years with Sandy, she still treated me like the most important in the, guy in the room. We didn't keep secrets from each other, and none of our de devices had passwords. We were open books to each other. It was about two years ago, when I was 35, that everything changed. It wasn't a gradual change in her behavior or her doing anything that was even remotely suspicious. It was sheer dumb luck and the help of a man I've never met. I said at the start that I work in marketing and once a month my job takes me out of town for a few days at a time. Normally, Sandy would help me pack to make sure I didn't forget anything and would drive me to the airport when I was leaving. While away, we talked and texted every day. It wasn't uncommon for my trips to have me out of town over a weekend, and when that happened, Sandy and Christy would have some girl time at my house watching those cheesy movies and drinking wine. On the trip, when my life changed, I remember talking to Sandy before going to bed on Saturday night. She and Christy were at the house watching a movie, so didn't talk, didn't talk very long, and said our normal I love yous, good nights, before I called it a night. My return flight brought me in town around midday the following Monday. Sandy was normally at work when I got home, so I usually took an Uber home from the airport and would unpack, do my laundry, and relax until she got home. This time was no different. It was after I put my dirty clothes in the wash and was putting my shaving kit in the bathroom that my world got turned upside down. While I was putting my shaving cream in the cupboard, I knocked over a can that was already in there, and sitting underneath it was an unopened condom. At first, my brain couldn't compute what I was looking at. Sandy and I didn't use condoms, and to the best of my knowledge, we didn't even have any in the house. So, how did that condom get there? Was it the condom fairy? It must have been because Sandy would never have anything going on when I was gone because she's perfect. It didn't make any sense. I was sitting on the side of the tub holding the condom trying to make sense of it and figure out there must have been a valid reason for it being there. I chalked it from to mysterious but not betrayal. I decided I would ask Sandy about it when she got home and was sure there would be a reasonable explanation. Nobody wants to believe what's going on is going on, especially this poor guy and in in the marriage he thought was great. 
At least that was what I thought before I lifted the toilet seat to take a piss. Written in lipstick on the underside of the seat were words that are still seared into my brain. Sorry, bro, I didn't know. This was written on the fucking toilet seat and the inside of the, lifted the thing to take a piss and there it is. Sorry, bro, I didn't know. <clears throat> I can't remember how long I just stood there looking at what was written and the only thing I could come up with was that Sandy was pranking me. There was no way the woman I loved and who had loved me unconditionally for the last seven years would be cheating on me. It just wasn't possible. After my initial shock wore off, I was replaced with anger. If this was a prank, it wasn't funny, and we were going to talk about how fucked up this was. If it, was, it wasn't a prank, I knew my life was about to change. At first, I was going to confront her when she got home, but if she was cheating on me, I would have to. It wouldn't. It would have been an easy enough to lie. I had to know if I need more evidence than a note written in lipstick and a condom, both of which could have been argued that I planted. I took a picture of the toilet seat, cleaned the lipstick off, and threw the condom away. Good, smart idea. Take a picture. That was all I needed. Her finding me with a condom and accusing me of cheating on her. If it was a prank, she'd be waiting for some kind of reaction from me. I decided to just act normally and see if she behaved suspiciously. Okay, intermission. Bro, that fucking sucks. I'm sorry, man. He's with her for seven years, guys. You heard the whole thing. He thought that everything was perfect, and it sure as hell sounded like that. And then comes home and sees this. I mean, you want to talk about blindsided, right? It was another three hours before she got home from work. And when she came in, like usual, she wrapped me in a hug and gave me a big kiss saying how much she missed me. And she wanted to change out of her work clothes. I followed her in asking how her day was and the conversation seemed normal. Bro, I don't know how you kept your cool. She wasn't acting nervous or out of character at all. If it was a prank, she wasn't giving up any signs of anticipation. It was probably stupid, but the only idea I could come up with on the fly was asking her about the toilet seat or toilet cover. I asked her to come to the bathroom and, she, and said that I was thinking about changing the colors in the bathroom and lifted up the new clean toilet seat while watching her face. Nothing. She didn't even bat an eye. If it was a prank, I would have expected some kind of reaction, but she was stone cold. Because she didn't know. That's why. At least this mystery guy had the had the decency to write you a note because he did, obviously didn't know. But she could have found that and erased it, and you never would have known. But anyhow, there was no way she was cheating. She there was no way she was cheating on me. But I had little doubt that it was a prank. The rest of the evening was completely normal. So normal, I was starting to doubt what I had seen. You don't want to believe it, and nobody could blame you for not wanting to believe it. But. Over the, next, over the following two weeks, I watched her, checked her computers, phones, credit card statements, and anything else I could look at to give me some indication that she was doing something beyond my, behind my back. There was nothing. I even called Steve and asked him if Christy enjoyed the movie that she had watched with Sandy while I was away. He said she got home a little late before midnight and said she had a nice time. I was going crazy, and if not for the picture I took, it might have been up, I might not have been able to convince myself that I had imagined the entire thing. If she was doing something behind my back, she wasn't leaving any traces. I was running out of ideas. I was scheduled to go on my next trip in a few days. If she was cheating on me, I had to know. It probably wasn't a good plan, but I was the only one I could come up with outside hiring a private investigator. At work on Wednesday, I put in for some va vacation after telling my supervisor there was an emergency in the family. As far as Sandy knew, I was scheduled to fly out on Thursday evening. Like every trip before, Thursday was work, Sandy helped me pack, and was as loving and affectionate as she always was with me. I had to be wrong. If this turned out to be, to be my insecurities getting the best of me, I was going to come clean after my trip and ask for an explanation. God, I was hoping I was wrong. I bet. But again, that whole toilet seat fiasco, you walked her in there and she was as... acted like nothing was wrong. If she had written that on the inside of the, of the hopper as a joke by you bringing her in there, you would have seen something. Unless she's like a fucking cyborg and she is, she's emotionless. When she dropped me off at the airport, I got my suitcase out of the trunk, gave her the customary hugs and kisses, and walked into the building while she drove off. Instead of catching the flight, I rented a car and made it back to my street about 40 minutes later. I parked down the block a little and could see Sandy's car in its usual spot in the driveway. 
I felt really creepy about what I did next, but I was not my right mind. It was a little after 8 p.m. and dark outside. I got out and walked past the house a few times and could see the living room lights on. It was on my third pass that I walked up to the house and peeked in the window. That had to seem weird. Sandy was sitting on the couch watching something on TV. At least there wasn't anyone in there with her, and that gave me a sense that maybe this was all my imagination. I went back to the car and watched the house until I saw the lights go out. I texted her about two hours after she dropped me off to say goodnight, and her messages back were the same as they always were. I waited another hour before I leaned the seat back and went to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, the sun was up and my back was in knots. I was starting to think that it might have been a better idea to hire a private investigator. It was about an hour and a half when Sandy came out, out dressed for work, and got in the car, and left at her normal time. I waited another 30 minutes before going to my house to get a shower and catch a nap. If she came home early, I would just tell her the trip was canceled and I didn't want to bother her. You were a man on a mission, laying in the car all night to see if this what was going on was going on. I went back to my rental about 20 minutes before the, her normal time of getting home and spent the rest of the evening watching the house. We had a normal call before bed, and that was Friday night. One of your neighbors saw you out in the car, you know? On Saturday, I just called her about before 10 in the morning, like usual, and we talked about what was, we were going to do for the day. She said that Christy was coming over to watch a movie with her later, and I made up some nonsense about going sightseeing. I was exhausted mentally and physically. I would not recommend sleeping in a car. Neither would I. I'm not going to explain that one. Normally, now you're all going to think that I live in my car. That, 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 here we go. This is what you're all going to think. I live in my fucking car. No, I don't live in my fucking car. I have a, free, I have a condo I live in. <laughs> I set myself up for that one. Normally, Sandy said that Krista usually came over around 7 p.m. to watch movies. With nothing else to do for a few hours, I went to get something to eat and made it back to the street just after noon. I have no idea how the police can sit in their cars doing a stakeout. I was bored, frustrated, and nervous, but hoping this was all a big misunderstanding. How the cops do it? Do I, do I have to really uh, tap into that stereotype? It's called coffee and donuts. About six and a half hours later, I saw Christy's car pull up in front of the house, and she got out and went to the door wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt. I was starting to think this was all in my head. It was looking like it was my overactive imagination. I, was, I waited about 30 minutes before calling Sandy to see what she was up to. She, start, she seemed normal and said that Christy was over and they were about to put on a movie and have some wine. We talked for about 15 minutes before I told her I have to have a good night. I think that was the first moment I was able to breathe in weeks. I didn't want Sandy to think I didn't trust her, so I decided I was going to come home in the morning and say that the trip was shorter than normal. I was so relieved. I, started, I, I think I actually started laughing at how stupid I was. Well, now the Christie's at the house, what could possibly go wrong? It was just before 8 p.m. when an Uber pulled up in front of my house. I thought it was a bit early for Christie to be going home, but maybe something came up. That thought changed when Sandy and Christy walked out of the house wearing pretty sexy dresses. Wait a second. I thought they were watching a corny rom-com show. What are they doing leaving the house in sexy dresses? Huh. I'd never seen Sandy wear anything like that. You've been with her for seven years and you never saw her wear anything like that? Imagine that. What do I say all the time that... Uh, for the, uh, the guys they really want, are hot for, they'll do anything. Everything from outfits to bedroom activity and, well, you get my point. Never saw a dress anything like that before. Hell, I didn't even know she owned any clothes like that. They got in the Uber and drove off. I had to duck down in my seat to avoid being seen. When the car got to the end of the street, it turned and they were gone. I was confused and now I was starting to get angry. I texted Sandy to ask her what was she up to, and she replied that she and Christy were just watching a movie before, saying goodnight, and telling me how much she missed me. What a fucking bitch. I didn't know she was cheating on me, but now I knew she was lying to me about what she was doing when I was gone. I think that was the second my heart broke. If she was lying about that, it wasn't a far, a far leap to think that she would lie about what else she was doing. The following couple hours were the hardest of my life sitting in my dining room with all the lights out and my mind coming up with all the possible worst-case scenarios. 
None of them were good. At a minimum, we were going to ha be having a talk about where she went and why she lied. It was almost 11 p.m. when I heard the front door open, and I could hear talking and laughing. My first instinct was to run out and confront her, but I pulled my phone out and started recording instead. Very smart, bro. Translation, what they're doing is they're dressing up, going to probably some local watering hole, picking up a couple dudes, coming back to the house, hooking up, and off they go. And it's like nothing ever happened, just like the toilet seat guy wrote the note. The living room lights were turned on, and I could tell there were some guys with Sandy and Christy, and they all seemed to be having a pretty good time. From my dining room, I, could, I couldn't see in the living room, so I got up and quietly as I could to see if I could catch what was going on in the recording. I think my heart jumped out of my chest when I peeked my phone around the corner. There was my wife of three years wrapped in the arms of another man kissing him. Uh, remember the perfect wife? Remember he thought nothing was wrong? No red flags, nothing? This poor guy. I'm sorry, bro, but you were smart. You kept your cool plan, a great plan of action, and you got this all on video. Christy was doing the same with the other guy. It didn't take long for them to make it to the couch and continue their activities. I was completely heartbroken, but more importantly, I was furious. I think I was so angry that the devil himself would have gotten out of my way and my rage was so hot. As the emperor would say, give in to your anger. I needed to confront her and I had enough video to prove infidelity for our prenup. Thank the Lord you got that prenup. The prenup that that dumb bitch suggested. Now my problem was how to confront them. I'm not a small guy, but I really don't like the odds if these guys decide that I need a beat down. I went and sat down for a few minutes trying to figure out what to do. I settled on surprise and, and being pissed off enough to not care. I turned the volume down on my phone and texted Sandy asking what was she up to. I heard her phone chime and a minute later she texted me back saying that Christy had just gone home and she was going to go to bed. Well, she wasn't lying about going to the bed part. The absolute nerve of this woman and in my own house. I texted her back to call me before turning up the volume on my phone all the way. I heard her telling everyone to be really quiet, and when the living room fell silent, my phone started ringing. The ringtone I heard from my wife was, Red Red Wine. Well, it should have been the Imperial March, for God's sakes. I just let it ring for a few minutes before walking into the living room holding my phone. I wish I had enough foresight to have taken a picture of the, sh the four shocked faces that were looking at me. Live, live and learn, I guess. I don't know if the shock made her brain stop working, but the, the, the only thing that Sandy can get out of her mouth was, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Who are these two assholes? What are, they, what are you doing? Now watch what she says, the very typical, watch the reaction. How typical is this? I laughed and I said, I live here. What the fuck are these guys doing in my house? That was when time seemed to resume and the room was in total chaos. Both of the guys got up saying they didn't know and rushed out the house, leaving Christy and Sandy watching me in complete shock. It's possible they didn't know. The room was dead silent for a minute before the tears started. Shocker. Sandy started apologizing, saying that I didn't understand and she could explain everything. And that and that and the one that sent me over the edge was when she said that she loved me. She can explain everything. I don't you don't understand. What don't you understand? What what are you going to explain? And you love me? Kiss my ass. I think the only good thing from that night was that I didn't have a gun because I would likely be sitting in prison right now. Sandy had run over to me to try and hug me, but I told her that if you put your hands on me, I'll consider it assault and I'll defend myself. Good for you. Christy was crying and begging me not to say anything to Steve. I'm glad she did. I almost forgot she was standing in the room. Without much thought, I forwarded Steve the video I had taken and told Christy, I'll bet your husband is going to want to know why his wife is a slut. Nice job. Sandy was begging me to forgive her, and that only pissed me off more. <clears throat> I sent her dad, her mom, her brother, along with my parents, the video, as well as saying a text saying, this is why we're getting a divorce. Damn, bro, no mercy, like Cobra Kai. Clearly, you can say I'm a fan of the show. Season 5 is going to end tonight in terms of what I'm watching it, and it's 
like Telemundo. It's ridiculous, but can't stop watching. Sandy had fallen to the ground crying, saying we, we could get past this, and was begging me to go to marriage counseling with her. Get past it? Marriage counseling? What, to convince this guy to stay with her and let her keep doing this bullshit? That the seven years were a total lie? I had enough. I told her, get the F out of the house and take your cheating SLUT friend with you. That only made her cry harder. Not wanting to get accused of anything, I started recording again and told her to leave and that I would call her when she could come over and get her stuff before going to my bedroom and locking the door. I'm not sure how long she sat on the other side of the door begging me to talk to her, but the entire time I was looking at the wedding ring that I had bought her three years prior sitting on the dresser. It was probably stupid, but just looking at that ring and band made me feel sick. I took them into the bedroom and flushed them down the toilet. It's not stupid. Nobody can blame you. So that was the night my life changed forever. The divorce was ugly, and she fought me all the way trying to get me to reconcile with her, but thanks to the prenup, I didn't didn't get taken to the cleaners. She fought you tooth and nail that this is the thanks she shows you to reconcile. That was two years ago, and I think I've finally gotten over most of my anger, and my life is good. I'll never make the mistake of marrying another woman. Good. Don't. It's all a sham. Sandy didn't exhibit any red flags. None. The only thing that is still lingering question in my mind was how long she had been doing that to me. Just like that question from old Mr. Al used to ask, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? <laughs> I guess the girl will never know. For seven years, I thought I lucked out and found a unicorn. It was something my dad told me. He said, son, you don't know that unicorns aren't real, don't you? Wise words from Papa. As a side note, now listen to this, guys. Steve got the video and he was pissed. But Christy convinced him to give her another chance and go to counseling. Smack. He even suggested I give Sandy another chance. Smack. Smack to Steve. Give your wife another chance. His wife obviously manipul- He's obviously weak and his wife manipulated him, probably because they have a kid, to stay with her. And she'll do the same thing because she'll lose all respect for him for taking her back. And he tries to convince you to give your wife a second chance. I'd have nothing to do with that guy. Misery loves company. You don't need any pussies in your life. Unless, well, never mind. That was the last time I talked to him. Good. I told him that I can't tell him what to do, but I refuse to have weak men in my life. He wasn't very happy about it, but such is life. Yeah. Guys, you got to surround yourself with, with good, good guys that you can trust, have your back, but also not weak-ass bitches. Because, again... There's a saying that we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. It really is true. And your friends are off on you. You want to be hanging around a bunch of weak-ass guys. Otherwise, they'll start to impact you. So that's the story of the worst time in my life. I can't get the time back, but maybe it can help some other guys out there see that things were, the thing, see things were I didn't. I really wish I knew who the guy was that wrote the message on my toilet seat. I'd like to buy him a beer. Thanks for what you do, SSM. Bro, that was one hell of a story, and I, I do stories, as you know, two, three times a day between both channels, and that's definitely one I will not forget anytime soon, the whole toilet seat thing. Now, I got to wonder if the dude that wrote that message in your toilet seat was aware before he wrote that, that, you're, that you know, the woman he was hooking up with was married. I'm going to benefit the doubt say that he didn't know until after he did his dirty deed, but it doesn't matter. At least he left you that note, because if he didn't leave you that note... It could have been years before you found out because your wife was that freaking good at covering her tracks. And I'm sorry you went through that. I really am. So I wish you the absolute best. Take it day by day. Sounds like you really recovered because it's been two years. Probably took you two years to be able to reach the ability to share the story with the world, aside from a few people that know about it. But uh, like I said, take it day by day. You're still young, man. You're, th- you're in your 30s. They're 37. I'm turning 45 in a few months. So I'm young. So you're very young. You get your life ahead of you. Don't fucking get married again. When you reach the point you want to do relationships again, or if that even comes to that, nothing more. Maybe your relationship with a girl, but that is it. Don't Sure as hell, do not get married again. But something tells me, you know, I ain't going to do relationships anymore. It'll probably be occasional hookup, but that's about it. But when you get to be, after what you experienced here, especially when you hit 40, the odds are you're just not going to give a shit about that anymore at all. Your life will be more about what makes you happy, doing well, building wealth, taking care of your body, seeing the world if that's your thing, traveling, hanging out with your bros, being happy. You need a good dog. A good dog or, or like me, a couple of good, loyal, adoring cats. That's all the pussy you're going to need because <laughs> what's out there now, 
And aside from the occasional hookup for release, you'll be good on your own. But I wish you the absolute best. And your story will help a lot of guys. But like you said, there are no unicorns. In my experience, there's, there's, there are few women out there that actually have some old traditional conservative values. I would, I'm not going to say unicorn, but there are some that aren't like these types. But it is extremely rare. And I'm sorry what happened to you, but stay strong. You're going to be all right. And uh, as for her, believe me, I think it was amazing that you got that on video and sent that to her whole family. Now they all know. There's there's no way she can deny it. She's got, they got the proof right there. And sadly, there'll be some other some victim down the road. But maybe, maybe he will uh, find out before it, he makes a mistake. I don't know. But anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let this guy know what you think about this. Give this guy a, a shout out. Let him know that you 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 got it, that he has your support because he could definitely use it. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.